हेलो गर्ल्स इन टूडेज लेक्चर आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट लाइसोजाइम एंड एंटी बैक्टीरियल सब्सटेंस दिस टॉपिक इज इंक्लूडेड इन यूनिट वन ऑफ पेपर सिक्स नॉट एट ए दैट इज मेडिकल माइक्रोबायोलॉजी सो वॉट इज लाइसोजाइम लाइसोजाइम ऑल्सो इज एन एनजाइम एंड इट ऑल्सो हैज अदर नेम्स लाइक म्यूरामिडेस और एन एसिटाइल म्यूरामाइड ग्लाइकिन हाइड्रोलेस म्यूरामिडेस बिकॉज इट इज एन एनजाइम विच ब्रेक्स डाउन म्यूरिन दैट इज पेप्टोग्लाइकिन ऑफ बैक्टीरियल सेल वॉल्स सो एज द नेम और एज द टर्म सजेस्ट लाइसो एंड जाइम लाइसो इज नथिंग बट इट मीन्स बैक्टीरियल लाइसिस एंड जाइम इज मेनली डिराइड फ्रॉम एन एनजाइम so lysozyme is nothing but an enzyme which mainly brings about bacterial lysis and it prevents bacterial infection it is the first enzyme to be sequenced and also the structure of it is elucidated by x ray crystallography it is coded by lyz gene in human beings let's go into the history of lysozyme though it was a russian scientist by name lashchenko who discovered lysozyme in 1909 basically in hen egg whites but the credit goes to scientist alexander fleming who discovered it in the year 1922 in basically tissues and secretions of humans so it also the structure of lysozyme was also solved by x ray crystallography in the year 1965 by david kilton philps where does this enzyme occur naturally it occurs in various places so when we talk about natural occurrence we mainly identify that it is present in hen egg white apart from hen egg white it is also naturally occur in various plant and animal fluids at the same time in case of human beings it is present in various body fluids like human tears saliva milk mucus secretions especially in nasal secretions so if we go into the structure of this enzyme so we all know that all enzymes are proteins so lysozyme also is a protein it is a monomer which is made up of a single unit single polypeptide chain containing 129 amino acids and the basic protein structure if we see this basic protein structure has a primary structure secondary structure and a functional tertiary structure the primary structure contains a sequence of amino acids and there are 129 amino acids in the polypeptide chain the secondary structure mainly has helical regions and beta sheets it has five helical regions and three stranded anti parallel beta sheets and large amount of random coil and beta turns so the tertiary structure is mainly stabilized by disulfide linkages and it is folded into a compact globular structure with a long cleft in the protein surface cleft mainly divides this particular molecule partially divides this molecule into two units so this particular diagrammatic representation clearly gives you that this is the primary structure of the enzyme lysozyme so when we talk about the primary structure it is a linear sequence of amino acids and this linear sequence of amino acids contains from amino acid 1 to amino acid 129 with an amino terminal and a carboxy terminal so you can also see that there are disulfide linkages and there are four disulfide linkages which are present in this polypeptide chain so 
this diagrammatic representation clearly gives you the secondary structure and the tertiary structure of the enzyme lysozyme. The secondary structure mainly consists of coils, random coils and then beta sheets. So you can see that alpha helix and beta sheets are mainly present in the secondary structure of lysozyme and coming to the tertiary structure it is a compact globular molecule which has a long cleft. So the cleft is mainly a partition which divides the molecule into two units. So you can see that in this cleft the polysaccharide chain mainly gets attached and thereby there is an interaction between the polysaccharide chain and the enzyme lysozyme. The bottom picture tells you the interaction between the enzyme and the substrate. So this is complete diagrammatic representation of a primary structure, a linear polypeptide chain, a secondary structure and a tertiary structure of the enzyme lysozyme. So when we talk about the substrate of this particular enzyme, on what does it act? So we can see that there are some certain important substrates which are polysaccharide in nature. So the first important substrate is chitin where we mainly see that chitin is a heteropolysaccharide which is mainly observed in the crustacean uh, crustaceans in their shells. Similarly, when we talk about this particular form of chitin, we also see that it is a structural polysaccharide which is mainly present in crustaceans and it is a polymer which is main, mainly made up of NAG that is N-acetyl glucosamine which is linked by beta-1,4 glycosidic bonds. So it not only acts on chitin but its major action is on the cell wall of bacteria, the polysaccharide component of the cell wall of bacteria bacteria that is mainly peptidoglycan. The polysaccharide component composed of alternating units of NAM and NAG that is N-acetyl glucosamine, N-acetyl muramic acid. This NAM and NAG are connected by glycosidic linkages and these glycosidic linkages are hydrolyzed by the enzyme lysozyme. So if we go into the general properties of the enzyme, it enzyme has 129 amino acid residues. It is a basic bacteriolytic protein that hydrolyzes peptidoglycan and it catalyzes the beta-1,4 glycosidic linkage between NAM and NAG and it has a molecular weight of around 14.7 kilodaltons. Below is the picture of peptoglycan of bacterial cell wall where we can see that NAG and NAM are connected by beta-1,4 glycosidic linkage and lysozyme is an enzyme which acts on this beta-1,4 glycosidic linkage and breaks down the beta-1,4 glycosidic linkage thereby disturbing the integrity of the bacterial cell wall. Lysozyme acts up to 60 degrees centigrade but over 65 degrees centigrade it is generally destroyed and it bats best in a neutral medium. The peptic or triptic digestion does not destroy the enzyme and it is generally stable when it is dried and it is also noted that commercial dried egg albumin is a rich source of the enzyme lysozyme. So when we talk about the interaction between the enzyme and the substrate, the interaction between enzyme and substrate is basically by hydrogen bonding and hydrophobic interactions. So the functions of this enzyme lysozyme, it mainly acts as an antibacterial agent. It catalyzes the glycosidic linkages, the hydrolysis of glycosidic linkages in peptidoglycan and chitin, thereby breaking down the bacterial cell walls. So it prevents bacterial infections. At the same time, it is also a model protein for studying the structure and function. It mainly participates in the innate immune system. So it is a defense molecule which participates in the innate immune system. And this particular lysozyme mainly acts against gram-positive pathogens like bacillus and streptococcus. When we talk about the applications of this enzyme, where it is basically used. So lysozyme is mainly used in nucleic acid extractions. 
if genomic dna or plasmid dna of a bacterial has to be extracted this genomic dna and plasmid dna can be extracted by using an enzyme called as lysozyme because lysozyme is the enzyme which breaks down the membranes or that is cell wall of the bacterial cells and thereby releasing the contents into the environment thank you